When you start thinking, yeah, maybe I am worthless. Maybe I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, that, I'm not that big of a deal. I'm, I'm a nobody. Self-worth, valuing yourself, respecting yourself as a human being is actually one of the great crises in the world today. <laughs> So now, this announcement is made. And Iblis, we know, heard this announcement also. And if Iblis heard this announcement, he also knows that Adam is made up of three things. I keep saying three things, so it sticks in your head. But we know that when, Allah tells us that when he refused to do sajda, he turns to Allah. He doesn't say, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ وَسَوَّيْتَهُ وَنَفَخْتَ فِيهِ مِن رُوحِكَ He doesn't say that. He says, you made me from fire, you made him from dirt. That's just one of those three things, isn't it? There's two more things. And he knows about those two other things. He knows about the taswiyah, the balance of the human being. He also knows about the ruh that is inside the human being. But when he complains to Allah that you made him from dirt, he pretends that he doesn't know about those other two things. But he does. He fully knows. The, the, this is a really important thing that I want to highlight in these brief moments. And there's hundreds of lessons in the story of Adam alayhi salam, but I hope I can do some justice to this one lesson that I want you to take today. And that is that when he denies these other two things, he knows, he knows that if he acknowledges those two things, then he has to acknowledge how incredible the human being actually is. But if he only acknowledges the dirt, if he only acknowledges the mud, then what's the difference between Adam and a horse? What's the difference between Adam and a cow and a monkey? They eat, he eats. They get shelter, they get shelter. They have kids, he has kids. He's, not, he's just an evolved animal. That's all. Okay, so he can stand on his two feet. Big deal. What's the big deal? He's just an evolved species. There's nothing more to him. There's nothing more to him. So he has a certain, he deliberately denies two components of our existence out of the three. Two of them, he denies them, and if he accepts them, then he has to accept the supremacy of what Allah has made, the remarkable thing Allah has made. Now, he hates humanity. He blames Allah for giving us this position. For, for, and he swore that he wants to not only see Adam alayhi salam fail Because you know if you hate Adam Then you got Adam expelled from Jannah You should be like I'm good now I got my revenge Feel better Nah he doesn't feel better He's like now I'm gonna get his kids And now I'm gonna get his family And now I'm gonna get their kids And their kids And he keeps ruining human beings time and time and time and time again and the rage of his fury doesn't go away he doesn't feel any better after getting revenge or destroying he doesn't feel any better so the the, the thing is how does he destroy human beings he does many things to destroy us but one of the most important things he does which is actually now i get to talk about the topic of my khutbah today one of the things that we learn from this passage and these ayat of the Qur'an is that Iblis did not want the human being to be acknowledged as something worthy. And his greatest success, one of his greatest successes, if he can convince you and me that in fact you're not worthy. Self-worth, valuing yourself, respecting yourself as a human being is actually one of the great crises in the world today. People in the sociology, world of sociology, people in the world of psychology, people across, in families across the world are, are facing a crisis of people who don't see any worth in themselves. Oh, I used to have a job, but I'm retired now. Nobody cares about my opinion. I, you know, I'm worthless. I just sit home all day. My son has a job. My, my, you know, you know, my daughters are gone away to college, and I'm just useless here. I'm just a burden on everyone. There's an old man sitting in his home thinking he's completely worthless. All I can do is just go to the masjid and come back, but I live with this worthlessness inside me. It's just better if I just die. These are the thoughts he had inside his, has inside his, He doesn't say it. Sometimes he even says it. Sometimes he even says it. He lives, in, lives with this worthlessness. A young man lives with worthlessness. He says, my brother graduated, my, my cousin got a job, everybody else is doing better, this one already got married, look, look at me, I, I've got nothing. I didn't accomplish any of those things. Oh, I wasted so many years. I should have done this, I should have done that. I, everybody tells me I'm a loser, I must be a loser. 
What does Iblis want to do? He wants to get people to say things around you in your life. They'll say things to you that make you feel worthless. They don't even realize they're doing it. They don't even realize it. But they're having this effect on you when you start thinking, yeah, maybe I am worthless. Maybe I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, that, I'm not that big of a deal. I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. And you know what that does? Once you develop low self-esteem, you don't value yourself then you're always thinking, the only way I will be valued is if somebody else values me. If somebody else approves, then I have value. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of myself, I'm gonna make sure I change all the filters enough times, and then I'm gonna post it online, and I'm gonna wait for somebody to do this, or somebody to put, a, put one of these, or at least a mashallah or something. Give me something, because if somebody gives me, I have some value. All right, now what do I got to do? I, I need more value because I'm worthless again. I haven't posted in two days. I need to get back on. I need to feel valued again. When you don't have enough value for yourself, you're always looking for value from where? Somewhere else. Someone else. Always looking for somebody else's approval. Always looking for somebody else's compliment. You didn't say anything. You didn't do, what do you think? What do you think, of, what do you think I should do? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Constantly asking for somebody else's opinion. Because without it, you're worthless. And then you become afraid. You, you, you know, when you become, uh, when you have low self-esteem, then you, you can't deal with any of your rights. Like people can walk all over you, they can humiliate you, and in your head you're like, yeah, I deserve it, I'm scum anyway. I mean, this is, I should be, I, sh I deserve even, even worse. And what's, be what's even better is Iblis comes to those in your life sometimes and he says, hey, say this to him. Say, you know what? I know I treat you like a dog, but you deserve worse than that. So you should be happy that I even treat you this much. Okay, you're lucky to even get this much treatment. And you hear that enough times and what happens? You start internalizing it. Because human beings, even if you reject something at first, if you hear it enough times, you start getting influenced by that. You start seeing yourself that way. You start developing a hatred, not just for others, but also for yourself. And then you just, this rage inside you is always like, my opinion doesn't matter. Everybody else's opinion matters. My voice is no good. Everybody else's voice is better. My presence is a burden. I have nothing to offer anyone. When you start developing this, this is a great victory of shaitan because shaitan says, that's what I was saying, man. That's exactly what I was saying, just dirt. Look at him. And what does Allah do? Before you and I even came on this earth, because of what our father was given, which we have been given, the creation of our bodies, then on top of that, the, he gave us an honor above all of Allah's creation. And all of Allah's creation see us as a miracle of Allah, worthy of all the angels falling into sajda, in awe of what Allah has done, in amazement at what Allah has done. So now the angels in the heavens are impressed with you and you're not impressed with yourself. You think you're worthless. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam." We honored the sons, the children of Adam. We honored the children of Adam. You know what this ayah teaches me? It teaches me I don't have to look for validation from anybody else. I can look for, what, did I do a good job or not? I should check. Did the food come out? You, you, you know, uh, you, you shouldn't like take this lesson and say, you know what, I don't need anybody else's opinion. Now, I'm gonna go home and pour all the salt into the food and then cook it and say, how does it taste? Well, I don't care about your opinion because Allah has honored me. Like, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. We do need to co get correction from each other. And by the way, when you, are, when you value yourself, then being criticized is not humiliation. When you truly honor yourself, when you truly realize your worth, worthiness, then you realize that when someone, if someone is criticizing and saying, hey, you said this incorrectly, or you need to improve this, or this could be better, then they're doing me a favor to help me improve. I don't feel like I'm being insulted. Because when you have really low self-worth, then criticism feels like you're being pushed even lower down. But that feeling goes away once you have value for yourself. Once you recognize Allah has given me value. Then you start seeing correction or criticism as an opportunity, as an opportunity to grow. It's not humiliating anymore.